What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video, we are going to be building this drag and drop list in SvelteKit. As you can see, we have three different items in our list and we're able to grab a certain item and drag it to somewhere else in the list. This is very common functionality you'll see in a bunch of, you know, software as a service type applications. We are going to achieve this functionality by using the Svelte DND action library. And we are also going to be using TypeScript to make sure that every single component in our list is fully typed. Let's get started by going into an empty folder in Visual Studio Code. For this video, we are going to be using the Skeleton UI Toolkit, which gives us access to a bunch of pre-made UI components. We can create a Skeleton UI project by saying npm create skeleton-app at latest, and then the name of our application, which I'm just going to call app. There is then going to be a setup process. I'm going to say yes to using TypeScript, yes to ESLint, yes to prettier, no to playwright, and no to vit test. Just so you guys can build upon this project, I'm going to say yes to both the code block and the pop-ups. You can do that by pressing spacebar. Once you have two green squares, you can press enter again. And I'm also going to get forms and typography. Once those are green, you can press enter. And I'm going to be using the skeleton theme, so you can just press enter. For the app template, I'm going to opt for the bare bones app template, then press enter. Now that our Svelkit project has been fully created, we can go into our app folder by saying cd app. And once we're inside here, we are going to need to install the package that allows us to have drag and drop functionality in Svelkit. We can do that by doing npm install svelte-dnd-action. That is all we need to install for this tutorial. Let's get started by going into the source folder and then going into routes and going into the plus page.svelte. Right now, we can see the boilerplate SvelteKit application by going into our terminal and saying npm run dev. So inside your application, you should see something like this. So let's get started by removing some of the initial boilerplate. So we can delete this entire inner div like this. And now we can start building the container that's going to hold all of our different items. We can go to the top of our page and make a script. So we can say script laying is equal to TS, so a TypeScript script. Inside of this script, we are going to import DND zone from svelte-dnd-action. Inside of the HTML part of our code here, we can make a section like this. The DND zone is incredibly important because it allows us to tell our code where we should be able to have draggable and droppable items. And so within our section here, one thing we can do is we can say use DND zone. You'll even see here that it's recognized as a custom action to turn any container into a drag and drop zone. This means that any components within this section are going to be draggable and droppable. Our DND zone is going to be pointing to a string that's going to have an object like this. This object right here allows us to initialize our drag and drop zone. For example, we have to initialize it with a list of items. So we can say items is equal to items. But you'll see, we actually have to make this item variable. So we can scroll up to the top of our code here and say let items be equal to an array. I'm going to make an object that references the first item in our list. And so I'm going to set an ID equal to one here. And it's important to realize that these IDs need to be unique because felt DND action requires unique IDs on all the different items in your list. And then we can attach any other properties we want to this item. For example, I'm just going to say that the title is equal to blog post one. And so now we can go within our section and create a card to represent a certain item. We can make an each loop, which is going to loop through every single item inside of our array here. So we can say each items as item. And to give every single item a unique key, we can say parentheses and then item dot ID to make its unique key equal to the ID of the item. And so now we can close off our each loop at the bottom. And now inside of this each loop, we can render every single component of our list. To style our components, I'm going to make a div on the very outside that's going to wrap everything. This div is going to have some card styling, so we can say class is equal to card. I'm going to make it a card dash hover. So when your mouse goes over it, it gives it like an interesting effect. And I'm also going to make it a width of 96, so it's a fixed width. And then a margin Y of 4, so there's some spacing in between each card. And we can go in here and make a header component like this and give it a class of card dash header and then have an h4 here, which can be our item.title. So we're using the title property from the item that we're looping over. So we can save our page and then go back to the website. You'll see that we have a draggable and droppable item, but it's not quite contained to the actual list itself. To make the initial functionality for drag and drop, we need to understand two different terms. The first term is something called consider. 
when you pick up an item and you move it around, a bunch of consider events are firing at all times. That's how you can make functionality where the component goes to the list like this and all the different items will move around it. When we drop an item like this, that's called finalize. So right now the item is dropped and there's a finalize event that's happening. Now we can go back over to our code, go into the section that we're using, and we can get events from the DND zone. For example, we can say on consider can call a certain function. For example, I'm going to make a function called handle consider in a second. And then we can make functionality run when we do on finalize. And I'm going to make a function in a second that is handle finalize. And so we can go up above here. And so we can say const handle consider is equal to an arrow function. And inside the parameters, we get access to the event. So I'm just going to say EVT for the event. For now, I'm going to type this to any, but we are going to get into typings in just a second here. So we are actually going to have a real type in this in a second. But just to show you guys how these events are firing, I'm going to have this handle consider, say console.log consider. And then we are going to make another event that gets fired. So const handle finalize is equal to an event that's typed to any. And it's going to be pointing to the logic that's just going to do console.log finalize. And if you guys are getting an error here, just ignore that for a second and go over to the web page. This is just for example sake, but we can see when we pick up the item, a bunch of consider events are being, you know, kind of like hit right now. And like I said before, this functionality allows it so you can have items move around when you move a certain item, which we're going to get into in a second. And when we finally drop the item, it's going to run the finalize event. And don't worry guys, this error here is going to get resolved once we actually have logic inside of our consider and finalize statements. So let's get back into the code. In order to fix the error here, one thing we have to do is we have to go over to our app.d.ts and then I'm going to have a paste bin in the description that's going to give us access to a bunch of different types within Svelte DND action. And if you guys are curious as to where I got this code, it's actually the recommended code to get types into Svelte DND action. So that's why I'm just having you guys copy paste it. So now we can go back to our page.svelte and we'll see that the errors have gone away. A kind of cool trick is that the consider and the finalize event now have types within the event. And so if we scroll over on consider, you're going to see that the event is asking to be typed as this event right here, saying custom event, DND event, item type like this. So we can actually copy this, go up to our consider event, for example, and then type it to that specific event. And you'll see it's actually asking for the specific item type of what an item should look like in our list. For simplicity's sake in this tutorial, I'm going to make an interface right above our items that's going to be list item like this. And we can give it all the properties that we would expect in every single object in our list. For example, I'm going to have an ID, which is going to be a number, a title, which is going to be a string, and eventually a description, which is going to be a string. And so now that we have an actual type, we can type this DND event specifically to that type right here, and the error is going to go away. And so now we want our list of items to also be typed to the list item type that we just made. And you'll see I kind of intentionally got this error to give you guys some learning points. Because we added the description to our list item type right here, it also needs to exist in all the different objects in this array. So we need to go in here and set the description property equal to the description of the post. And my bad, this should be typed to the list item array like this. Because if we type it just like this, what we're saying is that items should just be one list item. But what we want to do is have it be an array of list items. So we can do that by putting the array syntax here. One final thing we can do is we can do the same thing that we change with our consider event and do it for the finalize event. So again, on finalize has types now. And so we can look at the type of the event that's getting sent over, copy it right here, and then paste it in here. But remember, this item type is asking specifically in our drag and drop container, what list items are we expecting? And so we can do this list item type that we made right here. All right, for this next example, we're actually going to need two different items inside of our list. So we're going to go up to our items array and add another item. Make sure that the ID is different and that the title is different as well. So on our web page, we should see this. Right now, we're getting a bunch of errors because what's happening is that it doesn't know what to do when consider or finalize happens. The good thing here is that if we want to make a list where the items kind of move around each other, the Svelte DND action library fully manages the consider and finalize events through one easy piece of code. And so the event is important because it gives us access to the events.detail.items. This is important because it's showing us where our blocks should be based off where the person is currently dragging and dropping an item. 
So we can say items is equal to event.detail.items. And it's important to recognize that this is going to kind of seem like magic, but all the different, you know, functionality for calculating how the blocks should move around is fully managed by Svelte DND action. All we have to do is say that our current array is equal to what the current event says it should be equal to. And the exact same thing is going to apply for the finalize as well, where once we drop an item, there is going to be a recommended way in which the item should move, right? And that recommended way in which items should move, for example, if you're to drag something from the top and bring it down to the bottom, that kind of shifted array is going to be found in the event.details.items. And so we can go over to our application to further understand this. When we have our blog post here and it's moving around, it's running that consider event over and over again. And if I move this blog post to the bottom, it's giving us that new list of items from our event and re-rendering it as this, where the blog post 2 is now on the top. And so you can imagine it's re-rendering, 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 re-rendering. All that logic is handled by Svelte DND action. And when we drop an item, for example, the finalize event gets called as well. And inside the finalize event, we're saying the items is equal to the event.detail.items. But you'll see right now, it's kind of just like moving around rapidly. It doesn't look like modern or kind of clean. So now we can add animations that also run whenever our items switch around. So we can go to the top of our web page and import the flip animation from Svelte slash animate. And so when working with animations, one thing I'm going to make off the bat is this constant called the flip duration in milliseconds, which I'm going to set equal to 100 milliseconds. This means how fast do we want the flips to look? You can change this constant based off your certain use case. But for this example, I'm just going to use 100. And so what we can go do is we can scroll down and go to our DND zone. And you'll see inside the DND zone, there is a flip duration milliseconds property, which we can set equal to the flip duration milliseconds constant we just made. What this is doing is it's saying that if there are any animate flips inside of this drag and drop zone, trigger the animates when it makes sense, which is kind of a vague way of explaining it, but it's pretty much what it's doing. For example, we can have the animate flip event on all of our different cards. And so this animation is going to get triggered based off the DND zone itself. And we want the actual flip itself. And we want the flip animation itself to have a duration of flip duration milliseconds like this. And this animation getting triggered is fully managed by the DND zone itself. So it's something we don't even have to worry about. So if we go back to our application and make sure to refresh the page, you'll see we now have a drag and drop zone. So if I go up and down, you'll see it's actually flipping or doing a flip animation to move items around. You guys will see that for testing purposes, it's kind of nice to have this like yellow box showing where our drag and drop zone is. That's what that yellow box is pretty much. If you don't like that styling at all, what you can do is you can go into your drag and drop zone and say that the drop target style is equal to an empty object. You can also make your own styling here as well, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. But you'll see now when I move items around, there isn't that crazy yellow box kind of interrupting our style. So now we can go back into our code and add more data to the actual cards because they look pretty simple right now. For every single card, I want to have a title, I want to have a description, and I also want to have a list of tags, which is going to be interesting. So let's go make that functionality. We can scroll to the top and then the one thing we're going to add is that for our tags we are going to have an array of strings and you'll see this is going to freak out but don't worry <laughs> you can imagine these are tags for a certain blog post so i'm going to say tags is equal to cooper codes and i can go to the other blog post and say tags is equal to development or something like that i'm giving this array example to show you guys that this list item interface can have any types you want you're not being constricted by the svelte dnd action library at all so whatever data you guys need for every single component inside of your items you can put in here so now we have to add some html to actually show the description and show the tags so down here i'm going to make a section inside the middle of our card it's going to have a class of p-4 so just some general padding around it and inside of there we're going to have the item dot description then we're also going to have a footer class so i'm going to say footer class is equal to card dash footer and i'm also going to make it inline dash block i'm doing inline block because we are going to have a list of tags now that we want to show in one line and so even within our each statement here we can also do another each statement by saying each item dot tags as tag then we can end our each statement and we can render these little things called ships. You might've seen them before. They're pretty much ways to add like little pieces of data. 
for example, they're really popular when using tags. And so we can say class is equal to chip, and I'm going to make its color be variant dash filled dash secondary. And then we can just put the name of the tag here. Because item.tags is an array of strings, as you can see right here, we know that every single tag itself is going to be a string, and you'll see that TypeScript is helping us out with that. And so that's how we're able to just show the tag inside the span here. So make sure to save your page here, and you'll see we have different blog posts we can grab and then move around, which is super cool. If we want an example of having more than one tag, we can go to the top and say this one's going to have developing and coding. Make sure to save that. And you'll see we could probably add some margin here, but it has two different tags within one component, which is kind of the main point as to why I'm doing this, is I'm showing you guys that this is a great library because you have these full objects and you can have any data you need and have it be with draggable and droppable components. And just to kind of show off at the end of the tutorial here, we will make a third component. Make sure that the IDs are unique. So make sure this is ID three and the description is going to be make sure to subscribe and like the video. And then the tag is going to be subscribe. Yeah, I'm pretty shameless. And so now you'll see even with three different blog posts, we are able to have draggable and droppable components like this. One last thing before I end the video is that I just want to make it really clear that this items array right here is fully editable by whatever you want to do. This items array, you're able to edit at any point in your application. For example, if you wanted to make some type of more advanced to-do list, you could have all these different items be editable and the Svelte DND action isn't going to yell at you as long as you don't edit the ID, of course. But you can edit the name, you can add it, you know, you can add a tag to a certain thing. All that is possible within this library. So I just want to make it clear that you're able to edit the items even when they're draggable and droppable. If you're interested in more SvelteKit content like this, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. And besides that, thanks so much for watching.